How's it going, Ram fans, and welcome to another Bird's Eye View interview. I am Ethan Bird, and I am joined by former collegiate sports writer and current DNVR Rams beat writer, Justin Michael. How's it going, dude? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Football's back. Football is back. Uh, I mean, let, let's get right into it. Like, what was your immediate reaction when, they, uh, when the Mountain West announced that football would be back October 24th? Excitement, you know, thank goodness. I think it's really big for the Mountain West in terms of relevancy. Obviously, you know, playing in a pandemic, it's going to be controversial. There are going to be people that, you know, feel it's a waste of resources. I understand that. I disagree. But I'm just, I'm really stoked for it. I think it's going to be big for CSU. I think it's big for the Mountain West. And I think it's going to be exciting for the fans, even if they can't be there in person. I mean, it's, it's pretty promising that uh, that means that we're going to have a basketball season, too. Uh, uh, probably going to have to wait till spring for volleyball and uh, other sports, but uh, it is promising that we're, we're going in the right direction. But do you? What do you think the likelihood is? Is that of the Mountain West actually getting through a whole season? You know, it's a good question because when you when you look at the landscape of college football right now, you know, it's for the most part I would say it's been a success. But you know, you're averaging probably five or six cancellations a weekend. With the schedule that the Mountain West intends on doing, you know, eight games in eight weeks, it doesn't really give you any flexibility. You are going to be testing three days a week, so that gives me some optimism. But ultimately, you know, it's going to be a lot of individual responsibility on the student athletes. They're going to have to make the right decisions when they're away from the facilities. I think everybody recognizes that the student athletes are safest when they are on campus, you know, when they're, you know, in a controlled, yeah. you know, facility. You can, you know, keep everybody else out, but. We'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see. I, I hope so, but yeah. I wouldn't put money on it. It's going to be kind of an interesting experiment. But what I really kind of want to get into at the beginning of this is kind of just talk about um, student journalism, you know, life as like a sports student journalist, and then now obviously you're doing local journalism. So why don't you uh, walk myself and everybody at home kind of through your journey through here at, CS here at CSU to uh, now with DNVR? Well, uh... My, my CSU experience was definitely not traditional. Um, I didn't actually come to college intending to work in media. When I first got to school, I, I worked for the football team on Jim McElwain's staff. I was not important at all. I just, you know, I worked up with the coaches in their office. Mostly did errands and stuff like that. Ended up helping with some game day type stuff. But that was awesome. Um, eventually, I just kind of realized that that career was not for me. Uh, being a coach is difficult, you get fired a lot, you got to move around the country. And I was just like, you know, I love college sports, I want to work in them. I've always, I've always been big in writing. I was blogging at the time for the Broncos Wire, which was, a, it still is a popular Broncos blog. And I got involved at the Collegian, and it was awesome. I covered women's basketball at first, and I was fortunate because I, I got to cover a winning team, a Mountain West Championship winning team, right off the bat. And it was such a fun experience, it was so unique, and I was instantly hooked. And then I just, you know, I kind of worked my way up eventually. I started covering football, men's basketball. And, you know, after I left the Collegian, I did some independent stuff. I, I broke some news regarding Larry Eustacey. That was a whole ordeal. Yeah. And uh, eventually I found my way to DNVR after running my own site for a year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to, I'm glad you brought up the Larry Eustacey, um, you know, that, that story. And you were one of the people who, like, one of the first people to break it. And you were kind of leading the way in all of that. Um, what, what do you think that your proximity to CSU and CSU athletics was an important part of that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, uh, the relationships I had built over the years were, you know, pretty crucial throughout that entire process and getting inside information. And it was, it was interesting because obviously for, you know, a decent amount of time, I was not the most popular person on the CSU campus, at least uh, with the administration. I would say that ebbs and flows with our job and yeah. you know that was just part of it there was there was some backlash for sure that was a team that was pretty successful at the time and you know people were kind of like you know why are you trying to bring this team down and you know it, it was never about that obviously yeah. and you know it was you know just kind of about telling the truth and doing what was right so I'm proud of it but it, it was definitely a, a process and I had to uh, I had to prove myself because you know I wasn't I wasn't working for ESPN. I wasn't working for the Denver Post. I was just an independent kid, you know, yeah. still in school. And I just got kind of lucky. Yeah. 
Um, now, you know, obviously looking at the situation that CSU Athletics is in right now, you know, with the investigation into COVID, uh, the alleged COVID-19 cover-up, um, accusations of racial insensitivity and verbal abuse, are, do you see any similarities with how CSU Athletics is handling itself right now to the Larry, like, kind of how, what are the parallels between the Larry Eustacey situation and what's happening right now? Well, you know, we don't we don't have all the details from the investigation yet, so I don't want to necessarily speak ignorantly, at least from the football side. But I think there are definitely some comparisons there in terms of both are alleged, at least examples of the university kind of prioritizing their financial obligations, the people that they were paying a lot of money over, you know, the best interest of the student athletes. And, and that's pretty common throughout college athletics, unfortunately, but it's definitely not what you want to see, especially, you know, from a, a university that prioritizes so much itself on community. You know, so much of the branding at CSU is, you know, we, proud to be, all yep. of these things. Well, it's tough to be proud to be, you know, when your program's constantly getting in scandals. There, you know, there's some hope, obviously, with this, with this new staff that things are going to turn around. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think CSU athletics over... You know, the last six to seven years, they've they've definitely demonstrated a, a you know a, a trend in behaviors that would probably be disappointing to most CSU alumni. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not ideal. I mean, there's been you know going back from Lady Stacy till now, um, it's not not the best look that that that, that you want to have. But um, there is hope that with the new staff of you know new Adazio's new staff. Um, Nico Medved has done a great job great point. at, um, you know, kind of revitalizing the CSU football program and creating from, I mean, obviously, we don't know what happens behind closed doors, but from what you can tell, just a, a, a really good culture within the CSU football, or basketball team, excuse me. Um, and you, you can see that on the court. So do you think, you know, after that successful hiring of Nico Medved, uh, were they looking for somebody like that in Steve Adazio? That's a good question. You know, uh, a guy like Nico Medved, he's, he's pretty rare just in terms of how, how genuine he is. I obviously, I've, I've said a lot of good things about him. And, and you know, relationships are always going to be complex, especially with positions of authority, coaches, you know, people. There's always going to be, you know, little things you can nitpick about coaches here and there. But I think, you know, Medved has just done a tremendous job of establishing the right type of culture, bringing in the right assistance to, you know, help lead that vision, help bring it to life. You know, in terms of football, I think when you look at the immediate support that Medved was able to gather coming off of such a, a you know, really crappy situation with Usacy, for lack of a better word, you know, I, I think there probably was some in that. The, the, the Really the key difference with Mike Bobo is Bobo was a really popular guy. You know, he was, obviously there were some allegations about him after he left but especially you know when he was here he was well respected he was you know thought of as a you know good old boy or, you know and I, it was just interesting I think with Adazio they were looking for somebody who's experienced and could just help bring stability you know help steady things after what had been kind of a turbulent couple of seasons. Well, and, uh, now he's really going to have to start uh, stabilizing stabilizing things as a leader with everything that's happening Obviously, we don't know what's happening with this investigation. It hasn't is yet to conclude, and even then, we we don't know how much the public and the media will know um, what's going to be released to us from the investigation. Mm -hmm. um, but this is probably going to be Adazio's biggest test as a leader for this football team, and yet <laughs> they haven't even played a game yet. It's such a unique situation, yeah. you know. Joyce McConnell at least in the initial process, was fairly transparent, and she came out with some pretty bold statements. So I think there is an expectation that, you know, they will release some results from this, from this investigation. I think if not, there's probably going to be pretty open criticism against them just because, you know, they talked all this big game about being transparent through it all. Well, now you got to talk the talk, or you got to walk the walk after you talk the talk. But it, it's going to be interesting. And then in terms of Adazio, this is just, I mean, for a first-year coach, you come in, you have spring ball, you just get started, people are starting to get a feel for things, you immediately get shut down, you go away from campus, you come back, and then, you know, you have the horrific situation with Barry Wesley, 
and you know they they marched as a team, and I think that was a you know a sign of unity. I think that was big for bringing the team together after such a tough situation. Then they get back into workouts, and then they get shut down again. So it's just been yeah. so up and down. You have the investigation. If if they come out and they have a successful season, if it seems like the team is rallying around them, like the team is really bought in, and it, you know there are no questions about his leadership or their relationships, it's, it's going to be big. It's a, it's a really great opportunity for Adazio to prove, you know, this is, this is why they hired me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a great point. But going back to uh, just from, you know, a journalistic standpoint, you know, everything was shut down in March, just all of a sudden, you know. How did you as a, you know, a local journalist without, you know, the big resources of, of uh, a big newspaper or a, or a, or a TV station, what was it like, you know, going from March until even now to we have got to wait till October 24th to really have, you've got to, to really have any content to cover? Like, what, what was that like? Because you've, you've been pumping stuff out this whole summer. It was, you, it was, it was rough. To be, <laughs> I was going to say it's unique, but it was rough. Yeah. Um, you got to get creative, obviously. I will say, I think it probably makes content creators better because... You're pretty lucky in college athletics in a normal cycle. A lot of your content is kind of, you know, spoon-fed to you. It's all based around cycle. You know, you got practice and press conferences and games, and you know, it's it's really easy. You know, I'm gonna have all kinds of things to produce. It's not easy, but yeah. there's, you know, it's consistent. Yeah. And this summer, it was just obviously so different. There was some recruiting stuff, and and that helped. And people really, they really eat that stuff up as college athletics fans. I don't love recruiting. I think it. I, I just think it kind of pumps up a lot of people before they've accomplished things. And obviously, with commitments don't really mean a whole lot, but that's a you know whole other ordeal. But you know, basically, you just you had to get creative. I did an all-time Rams team. I, I created a, a roster on NCAA football. I you know posted the results on that. I I tried to interact with people as best as possible because I think that's just a big key with media in general, whether we have a season or not. It's just being interactive, being a part of your community, and you know, showing that you're going to try your best to keep creating content for them, even if it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, for, like, going deeper into that, you know, how important local journalism is, especially in college athletics, you know, because, you know, local, obviously, student journalism, and now you, you're, you're in Fort Collins, you're, you're at every game, you, you get to know the fans. Um, what do you think the, the importance of having local journalists is, especially in terms of the college community? You know, I just think nobody knows these communities better than the local reporters. And, you know, I, I consider myself to be in that group. But there's, there's a pretty great group of local reporters that cover CSU, you know, starting with, C, with the student media here at CSU. You got CTV, The Collegian, KCSU, really awesome opportunities for students. They do a great job. They get to travel. You know, that's a big deal in its own right. So many schools can't say that. Shout out to uh, Rocky Mountain Student Media. But, you know, the Coloradoan, Loveland Reporter Herald, they're, they have a huge presence. The Denver Post, you know, dabbles in, in Colorado State coverage. I wouldn't really say they're super consistent, but, you know, they do cover the Rams. And, you know, then there's sites like us at, at DNVR, which are independent, and we're all digital. You know, we're a little bit different than, you know, the traditional newspaper. But, you know, we're doing our best to just bring people the truth. You know, I think my style of coverage is, is a little bit different than the traditional beat reporter, especially, you know, in the 90s, early 2000s, even things have changed slightly. But it, it's, it's just so paramount to have these local reporters, one, you know, to highlight all the great things that are happening, but two, you know, to, to check the powers that be to make sure that these schools are doing the right things because, you know, as we've seen, that is not always the case. Uh, I mean, and who can check that? You know, ESPN can't, they're, they're not on the ground all the time like, like we are. And, and it's, it's really important to, like you said, just check the powers that be because who, especially as students, who's closer to, to other student athletes? Like who, it's, it's almost like it's our duty to make sure that our, our, fellow, our fellow students are being treated fairly and, and appropriately, and that's why I think, obviously, reporting on what's happening right now is so important. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like I said, I, I've always been proud of the work that the, the CSU student media does. I think it's important that, you know, they get those experiences, one, just from an educational perspective. But, you know, you can do important work. Yes, it's student media, but you are still making an impact in the community. You are still 
you know, doing all the real reporting that anybody else would be doing. You're, you know, maybe not necessarily getting all the same type of glory, probably not being compensated as, as much as you should, but, <laughs> you know, that's the process. And some of my best memories from college were definitely involved in student media, the Collegian, CTV, all of it. It was just, it was so much fun. Well, and, and now as a, as a professional, when you look back on your days, you know, at the Collegian, what, what, what do you think is really the biggest thing that you learned there that prepared you to, you know, start your career and have a, you know, a successful start to that? I'd say probably just how important it is to be an active participant in your community. Obviously, you know, you're going to talk to a lot of people naturally as a reporter. And, you know, sometimes you might be a little tired. You know, you might not be feeling that social. But, you know, on a game day or, or just to practice whenever you're around, talk to everybody that wants to talk to you. You know, talk to everybody you can. Develop those relationships. It's, it's going to pay off in the long run. You know, these are the people that are a part of this community, that are a part of the campus, that are going to hear things. And, and you know, nobody is, is too small or not important enough for you to talk to them. And, and I promise, you know, if, if you stick to that principle, eventually it's definitely going to pay off for you, especially, you know, if you're on a local beat for, you know, a consistent basis, uh, multiple months at a time. Yeah, well, that's awesome, uh, Justin. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's always nice talking to you as somebody who's, you know, kind of mentored me and walked me through uh, as, a, as a young journalist. Uh, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, great to pick your brain. Um, for myself, Ethan Bird and Justin Michael, thanks for tuning in, Rams.